Good evening and welcome to Clarendon Fine Art Live Official Instagram. This evening, I'm going to take you back to jet across the channel to the south of France. We're going to meet the amazing Mike Rumsby. Now, he's live this evening from his home in the south of France. I know he's going to be joining me shortly, so I'm going to see him coming up on the bottom of the screen. I'm sure he's got a glass of rosé in hand, to which I haven't yet, but he will be in the south of France. A few months ago we joined him at his home, we went behind the scenes, we saw some of his magnificent studio where he works inside and out, and this evening he's going to be joining us back again as he's had two incredible trips across the south of France for the last sort of few months and also in Portugal. So Mike, when you're ready, do you join? I think I can see you. Fantastic. I think that might be you. Yes, it is. Fantastic. We're going to join you now. So we're going to join Mike. Rumsby, welcome to Clarendon Fine Art Live official Instagram. I'm going to see where you are, Mikey. I think you can. Oh, yes. I, can, I can see lots of nice trees or a vineyard. Hello. Are you there? I'm here. Hello. I'm here, babe. Look at you. Are you in your. Hello. How are you? Oh, I knew it. <laughs> you see, I. <laughs> Do you know, I, you've just done that. You've just done that for our benefit, haven't you? Cheers. Because I heard you haven't got one. I, I haven't got one, not yet, but I will have, I'm sure, after this. Mike, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's brilliant, really great to, to, to join you again. Um, oh, so. I'm really good, really, really good, yeah. Very yeah. busy. Uh, we've uh, opened up our business and I've been painting lots as well. The weather has become glorious and uh, life's pretty good. Really? So how, how are your, um, just let everyone know who's joining us. There's a lot of people joining us this evening. Just how, how are your days of tough, long lunches in South France, Mike? Are they, are they good? You said you wouldn't tell on me. Well, we've it's just, so, so we, not, run a, we run a little sort of uh, guest house with a little restaurant. So we sat in Portugal where I went to paint for the winter this year and tried to come up with new concepts. And we decided that it would be a great idea to ask people if they would pay to come and have lunch with us on a Sunday. So the lunch has started at two o'clock, and yesterday's lunch did finish around 9.30 last night. But we, and Lee and I were very well behaved. Well behaved? I had 15 bottles of wine were involved, and I wasn't there. <laughs> I can't believe it. My well, that's, that's, that's That's the guest's prerogative, I can assure you. Fair enough. <laughs> But Mike, thank you very much for joining us. I know actually with the long lunches and numerous bottles of wine, you've been working very, very hard because actually this new collection of paintings that you've done um, have kind of been drawn from two very large travel experiences, haven't they? Obviously near where you are in the South France, but also in the Algarve in Portugal, right? Tell us a bit about that. Well, I, um, I mean, you know, like everybody, we've all sort of had a bit of a rough 18 months and we were able to get out last year and I, within France, and I decided to do a, take a couple of weeks and go on a road trip. And the, the, the kind of basic concept was to, to, to explore some of the areas that some of the, the, the more well-known uh, impressionists were, were painting in. So along the Côte d'Azur, around Provence area, we started off in Montpellier. So um, I went off on my own with my paintbrushes and uh, a bunch of canvas and some, some easels and stopped off at different places um, and set up little mini pop-up studios. So I set one up on uh, the, my family's little boat, which is near Montpellier. Uh, so that was quite tight and quite wobbly, but uh, we managed okay. to uh, produce some work there. Um, then again in Fusers, my friends have a little olive grove there, so I, I spent some time there and then over in Gord. So they were like little mini pop-up studios that I do, and that's really how I how I like to work. I, 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 I'm not really a planner. No, artist, I, was just, as, as you, I was going to say because typical, as you know, so typical of the sort of impressionist um, era, and also sort of that landscape painters. Predominantly, you do see a lot of them painting on plein air, um, you know, in situ, obviously, with their subject matter, and they paint on plein air. But you have got this pop-up studio, so you don't actually paint in situ, but presumably you take a lot of inspiration and everything and then go back to your pop-up studio and do it? Yeah, ab absolutely. And so it was the same in, in Portugal where we're fortunate enough to be able to spend some time each winter. And, um, you know, I, I, 
I take photographs with my mind. I mean, I'm, I think I've said to you before, I, I feel like I'm always painting when I'm on a journey. And whether it's a journey to the supermarket in the car, uh, through the vineyards here, or whether it's a journey to Portugal or the, 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 the Mediterranean coast. I'm, I'm looking and I'm memorizing things that I see. And yeah. so I tend to go back to, I, I, don't, I, I purposefully don't want to paint in front of a landscape because it's not really the, it's not the reality of that landscape I'm trying to capture. It, it's, it's a bit more than that. It's what's going on in my mind. Uh, it's my own interpretation. And I find that if I don't sit in front of an object or a landscape, I feel much more free to be able to express how I feel about it uh, yeah. in, in general. So I take kind of images with, I, I use photographs uh, just from my phone as an initial reference to create a composition often. Um, but then I'll just let go of that. And I'll come back to my, either my studio here in the house in France or the pop-up studio, wherever that happens to be. And I'll really let my imagination run wild. So I'm relying on a combination of, of memories uh, and my imagination, how I feel that day, what the weather's like, um, all sorts of other little influences that, that occur during the process. Absolutely. And this, this new body of work, which can I say, I mean, as you know, I'm a huge fan of yours, like huge. Um, I have lots of your work. I, I absolutely love it. Not only do the colours pop, they're really vibrant. Um, the canvases, are, you know, the colours, I can really see that whole, if I can't be in the South France, I can feel like I'm in South France. Um, but I think one of the things with this new body of work, and I will, and we'll show everybody around in a minute because we've collected um, quite a few of them already. Um, but uh, this new body of work, for me, it feels a bit like um, a development on, actually, from your previous collection, not just in style a little bit, but also for me, like, you've kind of, the medium has expanded. You know, there's a lot more for me, layers and the palette, there's a lot more scratching. Would you say that's, is that because of anything in particular? Do you feel the same or, you know, how do you feel about yeah, that? No, I think, no, I think that's quite perceptive. I, I mean, you've seen, I mean, you've, you've got the work there in front of you, you see it, you see the texture. And I think that comes from uh, a couple of things. I think it comes from, you know, my own desire to explore. I mean, every artist, wants to evolve and develop. And I think the more you paint, uh, the more you want to explore things. It's a natural uh, part of the process. But I also think that particularly in Portugal, the, the Portuguese paintings, uh, which is the main part of the collection you, you, you've got in, in, in Mayfair there tonight. Yeah. Uh, I, we were in complete lockdown in Portugal. We were there for three months. And apart from two weeks of that, we were in complete lockdown. So I had nothing else to do but paint. And so I think that I spent a lot of time and I wasn't able to go out and, and you know, capture many images really. So a lot of it was from memory. I spent a lot of time painting. And I think that those pieces particularly, the reason they have so many layers uh, is because I, I spent a long time doing them. I would work on pieces for days and days and days and then back. come back a couple of weeks later, painting on several paintings, uh, working on several paintings at the same time. Um, so you're right, the, the, the process of painting those uh, pictures, those canvases, was uh, perhaps a bit more intense and, and more time uh, consuming than, than some yeah. of the other work that I, I've done previously, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I know you've got a real love. I think one of the paint, you know, I've got, actually I've chosen my favourite, just going to say that. So I've chosen some of my favourites, I have to say, because I know you've got a real love of coastal areas. Obviously, you were brought up in Suffolk, um, so you were right by yeah. the coast. So obviously, and that has, and, and obviously you've got a really, you're blessed really, because you've got some amazing coastlines and obviously with the South France and obviously in Portugal on the Algarve too. So I just wanted to have a quick look at, because obviously this is rock pool, up the road, which must be, because just tell us in Portugal, I know this is your sister's place. I'm going to give a shout out to Kat. How are you doing? The, yeah, it's my sister and brother in law's house. Yeah, so this is obviously nearby. So the, I don't know whether the camera can come a bit closer because this is a key yeah, uh, business from there. Yeah, that, that, that painting is. It's, it's, it's Which one is it? It's the. This is Rock Rain Stop. Up the Road. No, it's not. It's Rain Stops Play. The rain stop plays, well, yeah. That's that. So that's some. Um, yeah. So we we 
so the one thing we were able to do each morning is to walk to the beach. It's about a 15, 20 minute walk to the beach. And that, that part of the Algarve, and I'm sure a lot of people will know it, is it's, it's a real Formosa. So it's actually wetland and marshland with uh, it's a, it's a, a, a national nature reserve. And it sort of sweeps up to dunes and then you get the, the Atlantic uh, beaches with the beautiful kind of yellow and white sand. But that, that walk we did every single day for three months, an hour and a half each morning round trip. And there's pathways that go through all these wetlands and marsh areas. And it's very tidal, so the water will come sweeping in and a few hours later it sweeps out. But the weather this winter was a little bit sort of intermittent, so it rained quite a lot. And um, uh, that those wetlands are extraordinary because they're reflecting the weather around you. So you feel like you're in this kind of 360 degree environment where the clouds are floating around in the, you know, in, on, on the ground. And, um, yeah. you know, the birds are sort of shooting up into the sky as you walk past and slightly frighten them. Um, and that particular day, we got caught in a massive uh, downpour that just sort of blew in from the, from the beach. And it just changed the whole landscape and, and everything kind of went crazy. Um, and I just, and again, I took that experience back and tried to paint it not as a sort of ne negative experience, but as something a bit fun, which is why you see all the, the sort of the circular clouds and the movement that I, I tried to, uh, to, to capture. Yeah, here. It's magnificent. I mean, it's really, obviously, it's quite hard to see live on social media, but I have to say this is an absolute beauty. The colours, the colours are vibrant. They are absolutely incredible in the detail. Amazing. Thank you. Com no, I love well, it. Absolutely love it. Complementing that one, which is Salir, which is in Salir Blossom, isn't it? That beautiful, tiny little town, yeah. again, which isn't that far away from the house. Yeah, it's about half. Yeah, it's about 25 minutes inland. Um, and so let's uh, actually, I'm painting some more blossoms here. So I'll go, I'll go over and- uh, I love it. I mean, you are, I have to say, Mike, you are so on trend. You've always loved painting blossoms. But I have to say, you did get yours out before Damien Hurst. I'm just going to throw that out. I did, I did. You did. And, I think and you actually, may have copied you, actually. So- <laughs> I think so. And actually, my, my brother-in-law and, and, and my sister sent me, the, there was a feature on his um, exhibition, it his, was. his collection of financial times. Everybody was. was sending it to me saying, haven't you just done this? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you've been doing it for a while, but this is, my, but, this is seriously cool. This is sort of, this is, I'm going through a floral sort of blossom phase. So this is where I've been painting the dark thin. Nice. Um, just sort of working on, and again, I, I don't have the flowers in front of me, but I'm just, uh, um, developing them and that that's the the Salia blossom was a yeah. um it's a little a little tiny town about 20 minutes away from the coast inland uh that sits on a hilltop and the beautiful little white houses around it and there was a church at the top there was absolutely nobody around i mean i think normally it's very busy but there was not a soul we just saw two little old ladies sitting by the church chatting with their masks on and there was this in this sort of incredible light that was bathing this white church, there was this extraordinary blossom tree that had no leaves on it, just the, this pink blossom. and white blossom in full uh, bloom. And it was just incredible. So again, I took lots of photographs and, and went back and I really painted that over the course of about, um, well, really since, uh, since March, I've been working on it and only just finished it probably it's last week. It's stunning. I mean, we used it. I know everyone um, from Clarendon who's watching um, as well, and, and anyone else would have received the, your catalogue with all of the works in it. But I have to say, we use this as one of the key ones because it is, it's just breathtaking. The colours, the palette is, is incredible. Um, and Thank I love you. it. And again, a bit like what we were saying earlier, you've used, there's a lot, a lot more going on on the canvas. And again, you've used quite a lot of layering. Um, on this painting, and again, it, it can appear fairly flat on the screen, but in, in the flesh, it's really painterly. I mean, it really pops. It's, it's just stunning. Absolutely love this piece. Uh, thank, thank you, yeah. And I think that, you know, the, the process of painting those pictures is, is such a joy to me, and that's why they evolve so much, and I, they, there are so many sort of marks, and they become very tactile, and, you know, I, I, I love the way that creating texture impacts the way that the next layer of brush strokes you know, goes onto the canvas. So 
no, it's a very enjoyable ex ex experience, and I, yeah, you know, I hope that that joy comes through in the world. I'm going to see if we can come in a little bit, if we can, just again, because it's quite, it's really nice to be able to see the texture on this painting and the canvas as well, because it's, it, the detail's beautiful. Really, really pretty, very, very stunning. And the next, so, and, a, and as we move on, which I know again is Portugal, because we've chosen, we did a lot, obviously, with your cruise fashion in South France, so I wanted to choose a little bit yeah. from the Algarve today. So this one, late afternoon in, this is in Quinta, is that how you pronounce it, Quinta? Yeah, in Quinta, yeah, in fact, the, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, there's a, there's a fairway of one of the golf courses that's at the back of the property, and so we, we were able to go walking on, on, on there quite a lot as well. And we tended to do that first thing in the morning or, or later in the evening when the sun was pretty low. And, um, you know, anybody that knows my, my work, particularly the work from Portugal, will know I'm slightly obsessed with these incredibly architectural pine trees that they have there down on the coast. And they, they, they have a very strong branch structure and these amazing thick kind of canopies. And so I, I'm fascinated, I don't know why I'm just fascinated by them, and they create such beautiful shadows. And so that was, um, yeah, that was one of the walks that we did. And there were a few pieces that I did based on, uh, on that area of the, of, of, of the course. They are absolutely beautiful. I mean, pine trees, like you've just said, Mike, you're, you've featured pine trees throughout your, I mean, it's quite signature in some of your paintings, but obviously very, very common in, in Portugal. And the smell, I always get, you know, when you go to the beach, you go down the rickety roads to the beach yeah. and the Algarve, and then you go to the... And you go to the beach and the smell of the pines as well. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's really strong. It's oh, beautiful. It's I mean, really there's lots strong. of things down there that feature yeah. in my work. There's the pine trees, there's the orange soil, uh, and um, I've said to you before, I don't really, I really don't like orange. So it always makes me laugh when it just, it just keeps coming back and appearing <laughs> in those paintings. It keeps and I keep trying to cover up. it up, and it still comes through. It does. And actually, and, um, as you move yeah, and the cactus and the cactus flowers. It's a beautiful area. Oh no, stunning, absolutely beautiful. I mean, this, so these two here, so we've got, this is one, so rock pool, rock pool up the road, obviously on this yep. side here, which is, again, it's a slightly smaller piece. I know we've just had, um, I've got an email coming through, so we've just had someone asking about the blossom piece, got a few of that coming through. So rock pool on the road, again, this is what you were talking about with the, I mean, you can see again, is this like what you were saying with the, re the reflection? Yeah, so this this is a um, there's a on the central Algarve coast. We managed to get up there before lockdown. And we went um, uh, for this incredible walk, and there's these huge sort of um, holes along the cliff walk. You know that suddenly sort of surge down into uh, well the ocean that's that's eroded uh, underneath you. So you sort of realise that actually you're walking with not a lot underneath you, um, which is a bit nerve wracking and. Um, it, what with it being a sort of southern European country, the safety is not really a priority. So I wouldn't want to go on that walk at night. You finish up falling down one of the holes. But um, it's they're incredible. It's an incredible sort of architecture. I mean, there's I think there's a lot of that in, in sort of Dorset on the Dorset coast, the Jurassic coast, and is, yeah. that same sort of erosion. Um, and that yeah, there's the reflections there. And I I just uh, a lot of the work recently I've become quite interested in just these these reflections of shapes and these circular sort of movements that started to appear a bit last year. And I think this particular hole was at this extraordinary angle um, that was almost sort of vertical and you could sort of peer into it to see the ocean underneath. And so I was trying to you know, really capture, capture that. And then as with all the other work, I then just get carried away and it sort of <laughs> it kind of turns into something a bit crazy. No, I love it. I absolutely love it. And again, super, super painterly there going on. But again, I love the palette. Now you talk about not using orange. Uh, so this one, clearly it's the sunset, which can I just say the way you are at the moment, the light on you tonight is incredible. You've just got this orange. Yeah, it's oh, it looks beautiful. so typical of the south of France. I love it. But this one, so this one <laughs> is sunset on a blustery day. So again, yeah. a different palette, but again, definitely using obviously, uh, you know, with your oranges um, and that warm sun evening. And again, same, same area, right? Yeah, it's the same area. It's the back, it's the, the, the golf course area actually. And it just, um, and 
that again, it's just this, there'd been a big rainstorm, the sky was very dark and, and, and that really sort of created, as the sun came through, as it was setting, it created this incredible sort of orange, sort of iridescent light that was extraordinary. Um, that's really kind of amplified by the darkness that doesn't necessarily appear in that, that picture. And I, and I think one of the things that I do, I do challenge myself. So with the whole orange saga, Orange Gate, I, I almost force myself to use it a bit to try and make it uh, you know, a, a lovely color. But um, I, uh, one of the other things that I did on a few of those, those pieces is to reduce the palette. Um, so, you know, whereas the sort of salia blossom, I mean, there's a general sort of palette of whites and pinks and yellows, there's actually a lot of color in it. Whereas on that one and a couple of the other ones that you've got, it's really just a two tone. So that's really very much a sort of an orange and a, uh, and a blue. But yeah. trying, to, trying to take the sort of basic concept of complementary colors to a slightly different level. And, you know, there's actually a lot of different tones of those colors in that painting when you start to look at it more closely. Brilliant. And the one, the one you've got behind you, Mike, so you, you, we do see a little bit of your, um, if you like, um, behind you with the vase, but you're still live, if you like, because we don't, we don't see a lot of them, but you have again started to do a few more of those, haven't you? Yeah, I, I, and I, 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 my intention is to try and do some more of these. I, I really enjoy it. Um, I, 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 I don't know, still life to me is on something that just was always a bit academic. And so I just associated still lives with- It does, like, you do a lot of I mean, it at art college, don't you? <laughs> a lot yeah. of still lives. And I just, I, I think that there's a new way of, of, of interpreting still life. And, you know, I, I want it to be as far away from still as possible. Um, well, and I just, I don't know, I'm just having a, the flowers, flowers make me happy. We're very lucky where we live and uh, we've got a lot of uh, beautiful, flowers and um, blossom and fruit and things here. And so I think, you know, this summer, my intention is to spend the next three months of our season here, really working on a whole, you know, a whole new collection of, of, of flowers. As I've said to you, I think everyone loves the, everyone loves a bunch of flowers in a jug, don't they? Oh, we do. I can't, I can't not have a bunch of flowers in a vase at my house. I have to have flowers. They are, they're lovely on the smell, the color, the look. But you are very lucky because where you are, you'll be surrounded by surrounded by them. Obviously, they're very beautiful. Yeah. Now I can hear a bit of yeah, laughter going on in the background, right? So, a quick question for you: You've got now you do these amazing. Um, and for anyone watching, by the way, you, you can DM Mike about this if you if you want to. So Mike does the most incredible painting retreats, right? And I know you've got two yeah. coming up, so people can come yep. obviously and stay with you. Um, it's a painting trick. It's actually, that translates as art and wine, if I'm not wrong. So you have, um, so you come and you can eat in the restaurant. Do you actually teach people how to paint? Is that how it works? Uh, I teach people how to let themselves paint. Okay, good. So they can experiment I don't, themselves. I don't, but I'm not, I don't believe in teaching people specific techniques and things. I just try to let, the way we, 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 the way we approach it is to give people the freedom to express themselves and have a bit of fun. So the retreats are all about painting and of course wine because we're in the middle of vineyards here. Um, so yeah, we've got one, we've got a week long one coming up on the 24th of July. Um, there's still a place or two left on that. They're residential retreats because we have uh, a little sort of hotel accommodation here, and, and as you said, a restaurant, so we're passionate about food. And um, yeah, then we're doing another one at the end of August. So That's, it they're, does they're sound fun. People, people really enjoy them. Oh, no, they really enjoy What's it. And actually, one of the key ones, you do like this sort of, you do like pop-up picnic, don't you, in the middle of a vineyard as well, and then people can... Yeah. Check. I mean, uh, it sounds yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we take, we, take, we, we take our guests down to... Uh, down to one of the local chateau and we paint in their grounds and then they don't realize it but well they do now but then they turn around and lunch is served in the middle of the vines or under the shade of an old pigeonnier or something oh. they're, they're great they're, they're really good and we enjoy it we enjoy it as well it's really it's really, really? rewarding no no it is rewarding and i think people must absolutely love it because they're actually in situ like you say painting 
their way, their, their impression of what they're looking at. But what a great experience for anybody. I think that is utterly amazing. And as soon as, because I'm not going to jet across by social media next time I see you, I'm actually going to be with you, I've decided. So because I'm, yes. I'm, I'm there in, in August, so I'm, I'm going to come over on time. We're going to do your pop-up picnic. I'd love yep. to get a canvas out, so I'm going to have the whole experience. And then maybe we'll do a live feed from there while we're there, which would be great. That will be brilliant. I would love uh, We that. would love that. Yeah. We might not ever let you go, though. We might not let you leave. No, 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 I don't have to leave. It's fine. But anyone that wants to come with, just let me know, and we'll all go across, and we'll have a massive uh, pop-up picnic uh, painting party uh, um, in a video. It should be a, a Clarendon team-building event. That's the one, with all our clients. It sounds absolutely spot on. Yep. Mike, thank you so much. I know that, obviously, you've got a very Thank you, Rachel. Party. My pleasure. You've got a busy evening, I know, coming up. Having yeah, the restaurant's open, school. so there's people turning up. We can hear that. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a tapas evening, so everyone's going to have tapas. And then we have a little outdoor movie thing, so we show that around 9.30 when it gets darker. <laughs> okay, I might join you. We'll, we'll come back at 9.30 for the movie night. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That's absolutely amazing. Just so that everybody knows, obviously, everyone, obviously, we know all of our clients and collectors. We have sent the catalogue of the new body of work um, across to your emails. I know that you've, you've received those. So do contact, obviously, your local Clarendon Fine Art Gallery if you want to see any of the paintings in the flesh or at home, because we obviously do home approvals. So, you know, I highly recommend it. They are honestly breathtaking, Mike. You have worked seriously, really hard in quite a surreal last few months. Um, so thank you for your hard work. They are gracing the walls and made there very nicely. Thank you. Um, and we look forward to joining you very, very, very soon. And send our love to Lee, obviously. We will do. He's behind the camera. I know. I can, I can see him. You can always poke your head around, Lee, if you want to. We'd love to say hi. <laughs> Can he do that? Oh, he is going to do Oh, <laughs> hello. I can do it. <laughs> That's Hi. Better. That's what we like. How are you, Lee Good? Now I see you. <laughs> I can see you now. Well, guys, thank you so, so much. And we look forward to seeing you very, very soon in France. Um, and, uh, yep. and yeah, enjoy the rest of your summer. Um, and we look forward to receiving more paintings. So thank you so much. Have a good time. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Ray. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.